I have a 12 year old solar panel that I built myself in 2008. It doesn't look like a solar panel now because I already started to break it down, but it's been a workhorse for over 10 years. It's made by a wooden picture frame with clear plexiglass on the front. For the last two years, it's been in a state of disrepair. Today is its last day, and I'm going to tear it down. But before I tear it down, I'm going to talk about my experience with building my own solar panel. Is it possible to build one, and how much would it cost? What materials are the best to build it? How long can it last? And many other questions to be answered in this video. I have learned a lot from building this solar panel, and I'll share with you my experience in this video. So I built this solar panel back in 2008. That was 12 years ago, and that was when solar was very new, and the cost of solar was really expensive then. Back then, it was about 4 to $5 per watt. So an 80-watt solar panel like this would cost you a whopping $400. So it made sense for me just to buy the solar cells and build the solar panel myself. It only cost me about $50 to buy the solar cells, so that was a huge saving for me. The rest of the materials were mostly stuff that I have laying around. The solar panel was made using a picture frame with plexiglass on the front. There are a total of 40 solar cells connected in series. I have 4 rows and each row has 10 cells. Each cell gives me about half a volt, so the entire solar panel would provide me about 20 volt open circuit and that should be enough to charge a 12 volt lead acid battery. Each cell is about 2 watts, so this panel is rated at 80 watts. The frame was made of wood, so I used silicone to seal around the edges to waterproof it. Amazingly, the silicone worked for the entire 12 years it was in service. This solar panel has never had a water leak in it. The silicone was just regular GE brand silicone I bought from a local hardware store. On the back of the panel, I used a piece of foam to support the solar cells on the back. In order to keep the solar cells in place, I used clear tape and taped the solar cells right onto the piece of plexiglass on the front. You can see the lines of tape still on the plexiglass. Believe it or not, this piece of tape held up for 10 years before it broke down. Also because I used foam on the back of the panel, the solar cells got hot and melted the foam and it actually more like got stuck to the piece of foam on the back. So the solar cells were actually held up by both the clear tape on the front and the foam on the back. That's why it lasted for so long. The melting of the foam was not actually my plan, but the accident actually worked in my favor. I could use polyurethane encapsulant, but that thing is really expensive. Plus, the encapsulant tends to turn yellow over time and that would reduce the effectiveness of the solar cells. My purpose was to spend as little money as possible while I still have a functional solar panel. And amazingly, the tape worked well for 10 years without a problem. The wooden frame also held up for the entire 12 years. So there was no problem at all with the wooden frame. The plexiglass also held up for 12 years. It does not turn yellow or crack at all. The only problem I have with the plexiglass is that it would bend when the solar panel starts to get hot in the sun. So make sure on the back of the panel, you also need to have a back panel that is also flexible and it should bend together with the front plexiglass when it gets hot. Otherwise, it would flex unevenly and will crack. If you have a real piece of glass on the front, you will not have this problem, but with plexiglass, it will flex and bend. There was also one important thing that I learned, and that was about soldering these solar cells together. Back then, I didn't have a good soldering iron, and my iron was not hot enough. I didn't use a lot of flux either, so the combination of not having a hot enough soldering iron and not having enough flux was taking a toll on the uh, solar connections. A lot of the soldering connections started to come loose on the back of the solar cells. In order to repair this, I would have to peel away the back of the solar panel and re-solder the joints together. And that would be a pain in the butt because the solar cells already melted and fused to the foam backing of the solar panel. So the lesson I learned was for next time to use a better soldering iron, I would say at least 50 watts or more, so that it would be hot enough 
and also use a lot of flux to make sure your solder actually goes in there. So to sum up, it is possible to make your own solar panel out of a wooden picture frame with a clear plastic plexiglass on the front. It only took me about one day to completely finish the solar panel and it lasted for over 10 years. So for me it was well worth the money and the efforts I invested in it. And I saved over $300 on this solar panel so it was a huge saving. The wooden frame, the plexiglass, the silicone, the tape, everything held up nicely for a long period of time. What amazes me is the clear tape that originally plan to just temporarily affix the solar cells to the front of the plexiglass actually became a permanent solution and it held up for 10 years before it started to break down. I could have just put another piece of tape on top but the solar cells actually start to disintegrate so I just gave up on it. And finally the only thing is that my solar panel is stationary and it stayed in one place for the entire 12 years. I did not move the panel at all so maybe it contributes to its life expectancy. If you have it on an RV or moving vehicle you might have to have a different approach to make it more sturdy because the tape and the foam backing are not going to hold up for a moving vehicle. And I learned a lot from building this one solar panel and that's why I would like to share with you what I've learned. This was the very first solar panel I built it myself. I didn't know what I was doing, but it actually turned out to be an amazing piece of redneck engineering. Alright, it's time to say goodbye to my 12 year friendship. I'm so sad. I just want to cry. <laughs> you can see there are a lot of cracked cells here and even though they are cracked they are still working as long as the solder connection between the cells are continuous they still work just fine, it's just that your output is going to be reduced, but they still work. I still got some good cells here, this cell is intact, I can also use this for a different project. For a crack cell like this, I can also use for other projects. I just have to cut it in half, exactly in half, and then I can use it for a smaller solar panel. This cell here got so hot it melted the piece of foam on the back and now it just won't let go. There we go. You see the foam got stuck on the back of the cell. It's the same for this one. It's going to fuse to the foam here. Yep, don't want to come out. Wow! There you go. Melted the foam you can see here. I'm going to give you one tip about buying these solar cells. So when you buy these cells, they usually come bare. They don't come with this uh, tabbing wire solder onto the cells. And I think it's much better to buy one with the tabbing wire already soldered onto the solar cells you can see here because it takes a lot of time and effort in order to solder this tabbing wire onto the front of the cell so buying the cells with the tabbing wire already soldered will save you a lot of time and effort you still have to solder on the back of the cell these connections here you still have to solder but you save a lot of time on the front. Alright, so here is what is left of my 12 year old homemade solar panel. The wooden frame and this foam is going to go into the trash and still use the plexiglass for other projects. And for these solar cells, some of the cells are still good so I can still use them for other projects. These broken ones, I will have to recycle them. Um, don't throw this in the trash because these are very toxic. First of all, it's illegal 
to throw in the trash. Second, it's very toxic, so you have to recycle this. All of these have to be recycled at the end of its life. All good things have to come to an end. The silicone is still good after 12 years. Isn't that amazing? That's all I have for now, folks. I'll see you next time.